Lab 1 Constant Velocity by Anna Catherine Brewer. In this lab, I will be observing and analyzing the motion of an object at a constant velocity. Specifically, I will be observing Newton's first law, which states that when no net forces are acting upon an object, an object in motion will stay in motion and an object at rest will stay at rest. I will be utilizing the velocity update equation to prove that when no net forces are acting upon an object, the initial velocity is equal to the final velocity. I will be using the tracker software to plot the motion of the object. I will also be using glow grip to plot the theoretical motion of the object. Finally, I will be comparing the actual motion of the object to the theoretical motion of the object. In this lab, I will be using my own experiment to prove that Newton's second law and the equation derived from it are valid and true which means no net forces yields a constant velocity. For my experiment, I chose to roll a volleyball across a flat surface. I only recorded the velocity after an, an initial push so that the ball would not be starting from rest and therefore have a constant velocity for the duration of the experiment. The system is the volleyball and the surroundings are everything else. The mass of the object was 0.26 kilograms. It seemed to be moving at a fairly constant velocity. The forces acting upon the ball are gravity pushing downwards and the normal force of the road pushing upwards. In a perfect scenario, gravity and the normal force of the road should cancel out, meaning F net equals zero. This means that the ball should be moving at a constant velocity. The next clip is me attempting to roll a volleyball with constant velocity across a paved road. I trimmed my video to a length of 0.9 seconds. I used the tracker software to plot the position vectors for the ball over an allotted time period. The frames of the video were 1 30th of a second apart. I switched up the orientation of the x and y axes for my plots to make right the positive x direction and up the positive y direction. I did this to make my data easier to comprehend. In the GlowScript coding software, I first set the object's mass equal to 0.26 kilograms. I then set the starting position equal to the starting position found in tracker. In this case, we are only concerned with the x component, which was 0 0.03683 meters in the x positive direction. I calculated the initial velocity by using the position update formula and the first two positions found by tracker. This was 1.89 Four two meters per second in the x positive direction. I set t equal to zero and the time interval equal to one thirtieth of a second. I set the loop to run while t was less than 0.9 seconds. I then set the net force equal to the zero vector because the object had a constant velocity. Lastly, I iter iteratively updated the velocity of the object than the position of the object. Here is an example of my data. Although the predicted and observed positions had different values, they followed an extremely similar upward sloping trend. The observed velocity of the volleyball fluctuated over time, but the predicted velocity stayed constant. The predicted model does not take into account factors such as air resistance, friction, or a disproportionate start from rest. All of the factors above could account for the differences in velocity between the two data sets. If I had switched the direction of the x-axis and made the left direction the negative x-direction, then the position versus time graph would start in the same place but have a negative slope. In order to determine the individual forces that act on the volleyball, which add together to equal the zero vector, you need to split f net up into several components such as gravity and the normal force of the road. This is possible, however, I feel it would be very difficult to determine every individual force acting on the ball such as friction and air resistance, which I do not know how to calculate yet. The volleyball should have rolled with a constant velocity if the ball was experiencing a net force of zero. This is because of Newton's second law, which can also be represented by the predicted model I created on GlowScript. The reasons that my experiment did not perfectly match the predicted values were because of air resistance due to wind and friction from the road. The two forces mentioned above caused the volleyball to move slower than originally predicted. In order to redo this experiment with increased accuracy, 
I would roll the ball on a flatter surface and I would choose a less windy day to conduct the experiment or just do the experiment indoors. Here are the links to all of my data. The top link contains my GlowScript code and the bottom link contains a Google spreadsheet of all of my experimental data. Thank you so much for listening.